So today we're going to report the results of a uh, experiment we've done with vertically mounted solar panels. So and these aren't ordinary solar panels, they are bifacial, which means that they can generate energy from light received by the back side of the panel as well. And that allows a lot for a lot of interesting uh, configurations, one of which was simply mounting the solar panels vertically so that the broad side of the panel faces east and west. So you're probably wondering why we could possibly think that this is a good idea. Now most EV drivers know that their electrical consumption goes up in the winter time due to needing to run the heating or just due to increased friction. And in fact the air resistance is higher as well because of the denser air when the temperatures are colder. And at the same time, the energy generated by a solar panel decreases in the winter time. Most solar cars use a horizontal solar panel, which works fairly well in the summer time, but in the winter time, the output is less than half that of the summer. So we have a real problem of generating much less power and needing to use more power to operate the vehicle. Now we see if we were to tilt the panel to the optimal, which is 58 degrees for our latitude, that we could almost double the output of the flat panel. Unfortunately, that's not a very practical arrangement, uh, that it will create a lot of wind resistance while driving. Now here we see that a vertical solar panel facing south performs almost as well as the optimally tilted one. So perhaps a vertical solar panel will work well in the winter time. So we got some more data from PV watts. Now PV watts didn't support bifacial panels at the time we did this and it probably still doesn't. So we just got the data from two different orientations and added them together to simulate a bifacial solar panel. That's probably not entirely accurate, but it'll work for now. We find that a vertical bifacial solar panel pointed south performs just as well as, or almost as well as, the optimally tilted panel in the winter time, and a vertically oriented bifacial panel pointing east and west performs better than the horizontal solar panel in the summertime. So we thought this was really clever because it means that the array mounting hardware itself does not need to move at all because simply parking the vehicle in a different direction depending on the season is all that is necessary to adjust the array for optimal power year-round. So on paper, this seemed like a uh, really good idea, but in practice, like our, we actually tested this and it actually performed much worse than a horizontal solar array. So we'll explain why. Oh, yes, and of course, you know, wind resistance is an important consideration as well. So that's why the, what we fear if the wind is going parallel to the surface of the panel, that then the, it just sees the cross section of the solar panel and that should not create a excessive wind resistance. So here's the test data from, you know, what we judged to be typical days. So the test days were nine days apart, so there shouldn't be much seasonal variation there. And we find that the bifacial solar array only generated 58% of what the horizontal array did. Now there was slightly less sunlight that day but so even correcting for that, that's still only 60% of what the horizontal array generated.
So here is the char average charging power. You know, so we averaged over one hour to help smooth the data out because like for some of the data like was very noisy due to issues. We think that there was conflicts between running multiple maximum PowerPoint tracking uh, converters off of one solar array. But then here you see the 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 bifacial array works really well in the morning, but not so well in the afternoon. And it turns out that the bifacial panels we used generate much less power from the back side than from the front side. And we, we knew that from the data provided by the manufacturer. So just comparing the sunlight on both of the days. And as mentioned before, the total solar energy on each of these days was quite similar. This is the data from the best results on each uh, array configuration. There, I'll expand that so you can get see the number there. We find, but also, 58% of the energy uh, collected. Now, the best day for the horizontal array was in June versus end of July for the bifacial array. And you can see that there is a uh, difference in the total amount of solar energy present those days. But even accounting for that, we still are only generating 68% of the energy collected by the horizontal solar array. Because the back side of the panel is not as efficient as the front side, we would rotate the vehicle around about noontime in order to ensure that the direct sunlight is always uh, present on the front side of the panel. So that is why we have good generation in both the morning and the evening on these days. But you can see that we are missing a lot of energy around noontime when the sunlight is most intense. And that this, these plots match what was uh, shown by uh, a test sponsored by Prism Solar. Here we see on this test that the bifacial array was generating quite a bit of power in the early morning. And not so much extra in the afternoon. Oh, and of course, here comparing the these uh, days for the test, well, one day in June and one day in July, the June day naturally has more sunlight, but we tried to cor correct for that in our calculations. And of course, the sunlight present in before eight o'clock should be not be more than. The sunlight from before 8 o'clock should not be higher than before 9 o'clock, but basically the way our calculations worked, that basically the 8 o'clock number includes all of the energy from before 8 o'clock, including like the 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock hours. Here is the test setup for the PRISM solar test, which was conducted by Sandia National Laboratories. We see that there are tests set up there that they have almost no obstructions to the east or so, but to the west there is this building here. And the location we tested our bifacial array at also had a building to the west, which reduced the afternoon output.
Oh, and the other thing that to take note of or so is that these panels are alone or so we're in order to maximize energy collected by the vehicle we want to have two panels and in fact our DC to DC converter requires the output of two panels to operate so that was really a problem because we were not able to capture the early morning energy because one panel was shading the other if the angle of the sun is low enough in the sky. So here is the um, test data showing the increase in energy as the second solar panel becomes unshaded from the first. We also made a video showing what happened during this test and how much uh, partial shading affects a solar array. So we will run that video now. Hopefully you can see that just under half of the bottom row of cells here is shaded. According to the data logging system, we're generating a net, net charging power of 162 watts. Now that will increase rapidly as soon as the bottom row of cells here becomes unshaded. Hundred and seventy watts now. Hundred and seventy seven watts. And this is like watching grass grow. Hundred and eighty four watts. 190 watts, 196 watts, 203 watts, 208 watts, 215 watts, 222 watts, 226 watts, 230 watts, 233 watts, 35 watts. Okay, so now the power has kind of almost plateaued from 235.5 watts the last minute to 235.8. And basically like the last of the shadow has almost disappeared from the last uh, row of cells. 237 watts. 237 watts. 238 watts. Okay, uh, energy production has actually decreased from 238.7 watts to 238.3 watts. Maybe we will get a little bit more power later after the that bracket shadow goes away from the, in front of the panel. So as you can see the uh, partial shading of a solar panel can be uh, quite detrimental to its output. So solar panels have bypass diodes built in to allow either parts of the panel or even the whole panel to be bypassed when it's uh, in the shade. Now in order to activate the bypass diodes the voltage of the array needs to be reduced so that basically th there is a negative voltage across the bypass section and then the current will flow through the diode and allowing the that section of the array to be basically ignored electrically now in order to do that, that means that the voltage of the whole array needs to decrease. And since our array only has two panels in it or so, that means that we our voltage would have to be cut in half in order to have one of the panels bypassed 
and basically the converter we use was not designed to operate from that voltage or it needs a full 72 cells in order to generate the voltage it needs to charge the traction battery. In addition we found that our 12 volt solar panels didn't seem to have part any bypass diodes to bypass parts of the array. You know and there were other issues like the the frame of the solar panels might have caused some uh, shading of the panel during uh, noon time and the issue of the backside not being quite as efficient required us to rotate the vehicle about noon in order to maximize the solar collection so we had initially thought that it would be super convenient to simply park the vehicle facing a different direction to optimize the output f for th between the seasons but in some situations is actually an inconvenience to f find a uh, parking spot in the correct orientation or the alternative is to park like a douchebag and take up two parking spots so the fact that this uh, experiment didn't work out so well is not a big deal because we, we are just doing this to get uh, data from this configuration in the summertime and we will reinvestigate it come uh, winter time when the difference may be uh, more significant and when we revisit this we will also revise the power electronics to be able to handle shading on the array much better but overall the idea of having vertical solar panels on a solar car is a good idea and we are happy to see that other people are doing this too so this is Daniel McGuire's uh, Chevy Bolt and the Sono Motors Scion and it's interesting that so Sono Motors is based in Germany where they are at a fairly high latitude and and their weather is n nowhere near as conducive to it is in the American Southwest here but apparently they have done the math and realized that it is certainly worthwhile to put solar panels on the sides of their vehicle as well as the t roof we hope you found this uh, informative and p please subscribe and we will stop asking for you to please subscribe once we get to 500 subscribers. Thanks.